What's up? How you doing? Okay. Let's try this one more time. Hi, everyone. All right, it looks like Rakeem is having some issues. I'm going to try again. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, how are you? Good. Hi. Hi. Hey, bro. Oh, hey, Lana. Anna's in the room. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. Welcome hi. to another Out the Frames. This is one off's ongoing series where we talk to Black NFT artists making incredible work on the blockchain. Today is going to be dope. We're talking to Raheem Ja and Phil Heal, as we always do. I'm going to have everyone introduce themselves. I am C. Sando. I'm the digital director for One Off. And who wants to go first? <laughs> You're waiting for me to go first? <laughs> okay, okay, I'll go first. Can you hear me properly? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So, um, hi, everyone. Um, first of all, I'm super glad to be here, and thank you, C, for doing this live. Um, my name is Rakim. I'm a digital artist based in Montreal. Um, I've been a digital artist for four years now, with um, initially a focus on fashion and garment design, then transition to um, product and homework design. Um, and now, obviously, with the rise of NFTs and digital art being valued at its, its base form. I'm doing a lot more of just digital art. Um, my art rotates a lot around storytelling. Obviously, stories of my past, stories of our society, with a focus on technology, sci-fi, futuristic concept, and uh, psychology. So, uh, yep, that's me. Uh, somebody just said you look just like your art. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, though. But yeah, thank you, I guess. <laughs> Phil, you want to do your intro? Um, I can't, I can't hear you clearly. Yeah, me neither. Okay, I, I have you on the stand, so let me just move it. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, hi, my name is Philip. Uh, I go by the handle Phil Hill. I'm a digital artist, two D illustrator. I also do two D animations, and I also dabble in three D. Uh, I've been drawing all my life as since I was a kid, but I've been mostly doing my illustrations traditionally till I got an iPad in twenty twenty. No, till I got a Wacom tab in twenty nineteen. Then from there, I transitioned to the iPad, and I've just been drawing digitally ever since. Uh, my style of art is inspired by manga and comic books. I've been a geek or an otaku all my young years, so that's what I've been accustomed to drawing. And most of my pieces, most of what I do recently, my, most of my works are focused on just telling African stories, you know, with a mix of fantasy and, you know, having given it that manga feel. Yeah, that that's just me. Um, can you, can both of you see the comments? Uh, um, yeah, mostly yeah. that we're fine. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. We know that. But yeah, thank you. We appreciate the comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, killing me right yeah. now. Okay, so <laughs> I want to know about 
how you got into the NFT world. So what was your first introduction to NFTs? Uh, let me let me go first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, NFTs, um, well, I've been, well, mostly on Twitter. I'm always on Twitter. Like, uh, I'm a big Twitter head. And I said for I've been following a lot of artists like Fate, Anthony Azekwo, and you know I started seeing them making moves in this new space called NFTs, especially uh, late 2019 to 2020 during the pandemic. And I was just curious because I mean, this was for me as an artist, I've never been able to you know monetize my work effectively or you know with a high value i normally used to do commissions sometimes for free just to you know pass time and draw because i love to draw for fun but when i saw you know my fellow artists you know going into this new space i was like hey let me check what it is about and you know i did my research not not basically a deep research i just did a quick look at it and i saw like this was a way for people to you know make uh sell their art for cryptocurrency but i also saw that it also gave them you know ownership of their work in a way and i just got fascinated about that and i you know dipped my feet into it uh, february but uh initially like i said i didn't do a deep research so it wasn't i just went in for the money but Obviously. and it, it did <laughs> obviously <laughs> but it, it didn't uh you know when, when people like get like rushing for the money they don't they try to get get in and you know hit it big which didn't happen like that so i was like mm, this is kind of like you know a scheme or a scam or whatever so i i took a break i'll say but then by august july august i came back in with uh with a new sense of approach i said let me learn what this is about let me interact with people let me understand what this actually is not just what I see on, you know, NFTs, people, and all that. And by and then, you know, it's just been a smooth ride, you know, with a lot of ups and downs. But basically, for the long run, it, it's been a very enjoyable moment. And what Sorry, year? Is this 2020, 2021? Uh, yeah, um, 2021, 2021. Okay. So you've been in the space for about a year now, right? Yeah, for about a year. Okay. Well, officially for about six months, six, six months, because that February part, I don't try to <laughs> <Okay. care. laughs> Yeah, because it was just like one month, like maybe like two weeks, I would say, two weeks. I was <laughs> joking. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Rakeem. All right. So, um, NFTs, okay, how we started? It started with crypto for me, right? So, in 2020, when the pandemic started, um, I actually just graduated at that time and I started working as a financial specialist and obviously like most people I was looking for a way out you know I just trying to stop working and being able to uh, just do my art and being, being an artist basically so I started looking into um, cryptocurrency and blockchain in 2020 and it was before the Bitcoin halving and all the all the things all the things around it and it started with me realizing that, okay, crypto was going to be like a big thing and it was going to like, you know, really like change things. So I just, I quit my job, started learning everything that I could about crypto. And around September, October, 2020, I heard of NFTs with people who made his first sale, he made millions. That's how I heard about NFTs. I did not jump in right away because i had let's say my goal of yeah you know making a certain amount of money that will allow me to just leave and do all sort of things so i waited until it took me about a year or so so until like um september 2021 before i really um dive into it so in the meantime i was able to like learn about the technology the utility and how i was going to be able to like really um like be involved in the space and just like phil i i came with the i came with the trader and crypto mentality with like trying to mix uh money real quick and i, I even remember the first the first um nft that i minted was 
Can you hear me? It bugged. Yeah, can you hear yeah. me? Okay. And, and I, I remember the, the first NFT that I minted was like a picture of my hand holding like something. And I, I was just trying to sell anything. So I, I obviously didn't understand really what it was and the value. And after, so he took me, so it was, that was around August 2021. And I quickly realized what it was really. And I realized that, okay, you have to come here by being yourself and really like, you know, just just be yourself and be the artist that you are. And so I minted my first real work with this in September um, 2021. So that's, that's how I got into the space. Okay. So both of you have been in this space under a year. Yeah. And you both were creating artwork pre becoming an NFT artist. What has that transition been like from going from physical or even digital but off blockchain work to now being on blockchain? You, do you want me to go first? Oh, uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so for me, it was really um, liberating, like really, because as a digital artist, um, just like with any other type of artistry, what you, what you just want to do is to create, right? You just want to, you know, you have all those stories and those messages that you want to, like, tell to the world and share, and you just want to create. But the fact that um, digital art wasn't valued as much by society, it, it always made me feel sort of compelled to add a physical product to what I was doing. And the thing is, he, 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 he always felt, felt like I was in a box because like, so now I'm trying to create and like tell a story or do something, but I have to consider that, oh, maybe this um, design cannot be printed on this or that garment, or I have to take into consideration that, you know, I, I'm going to order this piece to a manufacturer and it would take like a certain amount of time for him to ship it and you have other customers and like, there was really so many things to take into consider consideration while all, all I wanted to do was to create. So being able to just um, create and have that creation directly valued has really been life changing. And um, I, I, I remember like the, okay, for example, the, the first t-shirt that I designed was, um, had a message in the back, it was freedom. And, you know, I, I, I just, I remember I just did that design and created it on the t-shirt, but it was, it was so basic, but at the same time, that was literally the only thing that I could do with a t-shirt. And now you will give me a topic of freedom. You know, I'll like create all sorts of things, add animations to it, do like all sorts of stuff, you know? So it's like, it has really been, um, liberating. Liberating is really the word to, to describe how we, how we felt. I love that. My so phone, phone. Uh, with all parts. Oh yeah, me. Um, so, well, I've been when I started drawing, I've been drawing um, traditionally, you know, uh, with the uh, drawing paper, G pen, screen tones, what well, manga tools. I'll say that you know, switching digitally was you know kind of. I switched digitally because of how, you know, cumbersome and like choking the whole workload could be trying to, you know, pencil, trace, do all that. And I found that digital made my work more faster. And basically I've always been drawing for fun. I will always say that because I never took commissions or, you know, advertised myself as an artist. I just, people who knew I could draw were like, oh, could you do this for me? And I'll just tell, tell them, pay whatever you like, and they'll pay me, and I'll just do it. For me, drawing was just a way to, you know, be creative and, you know, to pass away time if I was bored and something. I, it was also fun because I loved, you know, thinking about, oh, let me, especially my fan art, I'm like, oh, let me imagine Bona Boy as a samurai or this and that, and I would just rush in and start creating but you know moving into nfts one thing about this space that you know that has made me even stay long is about getting value for my work and just people appreciating the kind of 
art that I do. I mean, people, yeah, back then, you know, they uh, like it, but it was just, you know, you get the normal retweets and like, and, you know, is off. But you get people who, you know, they will buy your work for, you know, the value you put it at. And they might even message you that, oh, they love what you do. And, you know, it just kept, it keeps you going. And that has what, you know, kept me in this space because, uh, it's always ma it's even making me challenge myself about the kind of art I do, you know, improve my skill level. Like right now, I can tell you that the art that I was doing last February and the art I do now are on a totally different level. So moving from you know, the true. traditional to the, to the digital space and now doing NFTs has been, you know, a an upward move in terms of my skill level and in terms of how my art is being seen and being appreciated and valued. I like that both of you brought up similar concepts around no longer having limits to the type of art you're creating. So like being in this digital um, blockchain space has allowed you to evolve your work. Is that true for both of you? Totally, totally. For me, yeah, true. For, uh, and... Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the fact that, you know, it gives you the creative freedom to do, you know, whatever you want to do, what you get to create, what you want to do. I mean, coming from the commission side, I mean, sometimes you're doing work, not just you may not like it, but you just have to give, you know, the customer is always right. Or they may even ask you to go beyond and above what you can do because they have this crazy idea in their mind and you can't do it. But right now, you know, doing NFTs or, you know, being on the blockchain is making me do what I want to do, experiment the way I want to experiment, not being forced, but, you know, gradually going into new things and new techniques and new styles and, you know, seeing, the, seeing it evolve organically, not being, you know, pushed around by, you know, people to do what you they want you to do and not what you want to do. Definitely, definitely. And, and, and um, on top of that, I, I, will, I will add the exposure because now not only you, you are exposed to this whole new market of, you know, people of the blockchain, like, you know, it's a decentralized open market and there is like, so many different and new people that you encounter, but also like all the all the artists that um, you get to uh, meet online, obviously. But they're like they're all inspiring you, you know. Because I mean, at least for me, it was like oh, so like now I'm exposed to I've never been exposed to so many artists in my life. It's, it's just crazy, <laughs> and, and I think it's actually the first time in history that so many artists are at the same place, so, sort of. So yeah. it's just like it, it create this like th there's so many way to be inspired and at the same time being supported because we're moving as a community and you're also exposed to different people across the world whether they are collectors community um um that can like people that are for the community and all sort of people so it's it's, it's just really um it's it's it's, it's just amazing yeah and speaking of communities, since you brought that up, what communities have been integral to your evolution on the blockchain? Because that's a really big part of being an NFT artist, right? Connecting with community. So what kinds of communities have each of you been connecting with? Um, uh, okay. So, okay. Uh, you, go, you go first. <laughs> Um, okay, so when when I when I I, rem I remember when I just arrived, the first community that really welcomed me was African NFT community. Um, shout out to Abby, shout out to Abby. Um, they welcomed me. There was just you know they were just so supportive, and I remember I was kind of lost, didn't know where to go, where to look for information, what to do, and I remember going to the Discord, and they had all those links to to like sort of give you guidance on how to approach things so it was really helpful and uh after that after a few months a few weeks into the space you know i'm a french speaker so my my first language is french and i i remember having to like think twice before telling things saying things in english so we felt like we needed to have also um, a community to really 
like um, just being be ourselves. And we we sort of started the French NFT community, and that community has really been helpful for me. Just to sort of have have a like a pillar in the in the space to just you know be being French people and speak French. So it was it was it was really cool and it was really helpful. Um, but now I feel like now, and maybe it's just me, but I feel like now is communities are sort of evolving in where people have the same um, center of interest because now I'm being added and I, I'm being, yeah, I'm being added in different sort of communities regarding, let's say like um, this discipline or let's say this um, or DAOs or this or that festival or this or that event. So now it feels like, community are sort of evolving in more of a um, center of interest. And I, I love that too. It's, it's, it's super cool. So there's a lot more niche communities now than. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, uh, for me, uh, when I, you know, came back into the space and I started trying to, you know, look for, you know, understand how it was, you know, I first tried to, you know, because I mean, this space is full of you no know, white people, and <laughs> I'm not. I, it's, it's just a, it, it, it's really like well, I'm, I'm, I'm a Nigerian guy. Act and stuff is like <laughs> so. I I was looking for you know black communities, especially you know African and Nigerian you know communities, and I found the African NFT again. Shout out to Abby Vintage. Shout out to Abby. And Mel. Uh, yeah, and. From there, you know, I started, you know, hobnobbing with them, and it, they also like exposed me to a whole lot of creatives out there because my feed was always wasn't really get towards art in that way, especially from Nigerians. So I wasn't seeing my fellow Nigerian and African African creatives in en mass like the way I saw them through the African NFT community. And I also found, you know, still interacting with like other creatives such as um, Stones the Organic. Big shout out to him because mm -hmm. I was, I remember, you know, back in the day, I used to like drive around, maybe sometimes DoorDash and I would, you know, be listening to Stone Spaces. That was when, you know, I was in the listening phase of just listening. And from there, I now, I went to rooms and I started talking with him, talking with other creatives. And, you know, the way they welcomed me was just so, it was so surprising because, I mean, I'm used to, you know, there being this, you know, gatekeeping structure in terms of gatekeeping in, in spaces or in any any place, there's always gatekeeping. But I was being like the homie. Um, that kind of, you know, surprised me. But I, as I kept on going, like a big part of where community came in was when I got hacked. I mean, early in the space, you know, even with all the warnings around, you know, I still got hacked, but it was a clever way that Oh, you got it. hacked? I didn't but, know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, you know, I, I initially, you know, the first reaction was to back up and just, like, leave the space, and yeah, that's the end. But I was like, hmm, since I've, you know, made some friends in, you know, in a short amount of time, let me just, you know, tell them what happened, that, you know, maybe, I'll just, just tell them what happened. And as I, you know, went, reached out to guys, you know, the way, you know, the support that I got was overwhelming, to be honest, because, you know, I had people reaching out to give me eats, trying to give me foundation invites, you know, helping me get back on track. And, you know, that was another reason why I was like, oh, yeah, I'm here to stay because, I mean, for me to be given that level of support and, look you know, like, from people who just knew me in, like, two weeks, you just have to, you know, stay there and also be there for them. And, you know, like Rakim said, like, when you now discover like the community, you now find out that there are also like sub, you know, niches of other places. I mean, there are three D artists that have their own community. There are photographers, which is, photography is now big because they grew their own community and it's a big platform right now. And you see, like every the community is a big aspect of this because if anybody is trying to come into the NFT space as a one man army and you know I can do it on my own. I mean, if you're not, you know, a big name in the arts world, I will tell you, it's just going to be a hard road because you do have to, like, reach out to people and just learn because 
again, this space, I mean, a day in Web3 is like two weeks. So the amount of information that passes around here, you're definitely going to miss a thing. And you can't just, you, you, might, you may not even know, you know, what's new out there. You may still be running with the old mindsets while there's a new, you know, when, while there's a new view in, this, in the space. So, yeah, community is a, a very big aspect of that. And I'm very thankful to the community that I've been in, especially the African NFC community. And just, you know, I've made, like, friends from, from there. So, big, big yeah. shout out to everyone there. <laughs> <laughs> there, 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 there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's 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 very true. That's very true. And just just to say something, I, 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 I and I feel like it's it's so, and it sort of makes sense even when you look at like the platform that we're using the most, like um, I would say Clubhouse, Discord, Twitter, where like you know you're interacting with people, and it's not just you seeing someone someone's picture and just liking it, or like just you being a follower. Now it's it's, it's really it shows the, the, the face of Web3 that it's a community place as, you know, we are mostly on Twitter because we talk to each other, we like communicate, we're on spaces. We, it's, it's not just like, like you said, a one-man army with like all his followers and like everybody's just like liking your picture and all that. So definitely community is a very big thing. And yeah. yeah. There's one thing that I think is super important. Um, for all NFT artists. And I'm honestly shocked at this point that we haven't talked about it in previous interviews, um, but balance. So maintain, maintaining balance, um, general health, you know, physical wellness, um, mental health. So I wanna to talk to each of you about how you're able to maintain balance and make sure that you don't get overwhelmed. Like we've mentioned already multiple times, quickly the space changes right mm -hmm. you want to go first here first, so, so um this is overwhelming i think your mic bro i think your mic is sorry here. my my stand, I think my stand <laughs> calls my speaker, bro. yeah you can hear me now yeah yeah Okay, yeah. So the space is really overwhelming because not only a lot of information, you know, passes gets into the space, but you know, a lot of things are happening. You know, a lot of success happening here and there. So you know that messes with your head in a way. So the way I tend, to, I find balance is, I mean, I know, I first tell myself, you know, your own time will come. You know, I mean, first and first, I was an artist before I came into the NFT space. So, I mean, even without NFTs, I'll keep on creating. So that also keeps me, my head, you know, down because, I mean, I didn't start creating because I was into NFTs. I was, I've been creating before them. Then, too, you know, sometimes I, I take breaks. No, I don't take, like, big breaks. I don't know. I can't, I can't I, I admit I'm addicted to my Twitter. But because, again, apart from Web3, I also get a lot of entertainment from it. But I do advise, you know, I take breaks, you know, sometimes I do other things. I play video games, you know. You just have to take a, a breather out of this space because it's choking, to be honest. There are a lot of things and you get to the FOMO. The, the FOMO will be so great that you start making mistakes along the way. So I do, you know, tell people, I will advise people that if it gets too much for you, you just, you know, you can step out. It doesn't, I mean, Web3 will always be there even with the information and everything. Web3 will always be there when you go out and when you come back. So, you know, you can take a break, you know, chill. And always try to, always remember that there is a world outside of Web3. There's a world outside to the spaces. There's a world outside, you know, trying to sell your art, you know, because I know a lot of people have, they forget to call their parents, you know, their loved ones <laughs> because they are always in the space. Uh, yeah, I'm also, I, I will admit to that, you know, you always, some people be in spaces and they might, oh, I'm about to talk then their mom calls them and before they cut the call, yeah, and that that's not healthy. So I will tell, you know, you have to sometimes drop the phone, you know, drop the pen, you know, close the laptop and just go outside, you know, take, take a walk, you know, talk to your friends, talk to your family. And, you know, remember that, you remember, and also remember that you were an artist before you came into, you know, the NFT scene. And 
remember why you kept why you started drawing remember the feeling because people also they stray from what they love to make because they want to make something that will sell so I, and that's kind of frustrating i mean i've tried to do that one time and so i was like nope <laughs> this isn't me because i do the joy that you get when you're creating what you love to make beats anything anything you try to create because you want to just make that quick but i mean it might come but at the end of the day you ask yourself why isn't you know why can't i you know sell what i love than just try to follow the market you know and you just when you're concentrating on the sales it just it just kills the fun out of creating so i just tell people you know remember why you came you know what you've been doing remember why you started drawing and take that break if you need it take that break if it's too much for you or more just drop your phone and move yeah definitely i i agree 100 percent to that and especially the part of um god side turn off turn off, turn off notifications talk to your parents talk to your family hang out with your friends um something that really helps me to stay grounded and get back into reality is talking to my mom and my sister because they're overseas and every time I speak to them or talk to them, it just, it just brings me back. And, you know, it reminds me that, okay, there's a world out there. And, you know, just hanging out with friends, having fun, just, yeah, being, being a normal person in real life. Um, also, working out. Working out helps me a lot. Um, I don't know, just having my, my mind focusing on, you know, doing the rep and like trying to push forward it, it really it really helps me personally to stay um i would say to stay balanced to stay ground grounded mentally um so really working out hanging out with my friends um talking to my family stuff like that but also there is something that i think is really important it is to have i would say medium short-term goals why am I saying that? Is because um, I feel like okay, we we all know that you know the space is going really fast, right? So like every, every time you go on Twitter or you open your app, you see like so many informations and so many things going on, and there is like a drama every day. But if if you like, let's say, and I realized that we're working on the Mona Lana when we were doing the project, because now I had this project that I wanna. Um, like get into a point where we are releasing it. So every day when I come on the app, besides like, you know, supporting my friend and supporting people, I know what I'm here to do. So I would not necessarily spend time with no purpose because, you know, you just be like, you know, going on Instagram and scrolling with no reason. And then you just see a bunch of information that you don't really need. So for me personally, it helps to like, you know, when I know that I'm working on, on something, on a project, on a collection, or all sort of different things, but with like uh, like a time frame, it helps me to like not get distracted and therefore not, I would say, being like influenced by, oh, like there's this going on or there's this going on because I know what I'm doing. Um, I want to say something. I hope it will... Well, okay. Again, it's my personal opinion, but I feel like what's going on in the space right now, just like Phil said, is like, you know, many people or artists, I guess the reason why you could feel um, impacted mentally could be that, okay, you're not making sales and stuff like that. But it's, I feel like it's really putting yourself in a box because really the, the space is filled with so many opportunities and chances for artists and creative people to build. And if we're talking about making a sale or making, let's say, money, there is so many out there that does not necessarily um, require you to just create an art piece and try to sell it. Because objectively, objectively, if you think about it, long term, it is not sustainable, right? You, 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 you will not just wake up every day and try to do a piece and sell it, right? Because we are building, the, let's say, the metaverse, a digital society. And I can like, for example, I'm just gonna okay, I'm just gonna say to give an example like, um, Artifact Studio, they're, they're a, a project that I created the a collectible which is the Clonex, 
And what they did is that they airdropped to every Clonex owner these virtual houses. Um, like, so they're like virtual condos that every Clonex uh, received. And what they did is that they allowed us to redesign the interior of those virtual houses. So what happened is that a lot of 3D artists created sort of presets for those digital houses and started to sell them to Clonex owners. Some of those presets are selling for like three Ethereum, one to three Ethereum, and like they're, they're, meaning, they're, they're making so much money. And see, just because they stayed where the value were, was and they, like they're still artists, right? And they're still creative and they are still in control of what they're doing, but now they're like adding value to a specific place. So I feel like I feel like just taking the time to look around and see where you can actually um, like add value as a digital creator can help to like shift the focus and not be not I don't know to me I feel like if I will if I just decide to make a sale every time I would be like in the queue of like literally all this, like literally when you apply to a platform like Super Rare or or uh, um, Nifty Getaway, you're in the queue of artists that are waiting to be accepted on the platform. And that's, that's not the idea of decentralization. Like we're, we're here to be free, right? So I feel like you shouldn't put yourself in a box and you just try to like, oh, I have to make a sale or I have to be on Super Rare or I have to do this or that. Like we are digital creators and there is no metaverse or um, digital, oh shit, my phone almost fell. <laughs> But yeah, that's, 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 that's what I think personally. And just keeping that in mind helps me to not being influenced or impacted by what's happening around. I try, it helps me to have the, to have um, clear ideas. Yeah. Dropping knowledge. <laughs> um, you have a project coming up that you're just about to drop, right? Where can you, do you want to talk about it? Um, yes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, um, I am working on a collection that is also going to be a virtual exhibition. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, uh, okay, no, can you say not excited? I'm really energized <laughs> about, I'm really energized about, about it. It is going to be my first ever exhibition ever and it's something that I wanted to do like for so long and you know it's so hard to do a, a physical exhibition in real life because like you, know, you have to do so many things but now we've been given that ability with you know web3 so yeah the collection is going to be a virtual exhibition you'll be able to see it in VR you'll be able to see it from your phone from your laptop um, I do not have a date yet but it's going to be in the next two weeks and uh yeah i'm really excited really energized you can already have an idea of what it's going to be if you go to my website or my instagram i dropped a few a few things but yeah so that's that's the project that i'm working on right now okay so yeah. We should make sure we're watching your Instagram because you'll let now the date. Yeah, um, mostly my, well, on Instagram as well, I will announce it, but mostly on Twitter. Okay. And I will, but it, it will be everywhere. It will be um, everywhere on my website as well. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Exciting. Yeah. yeah, I'm really excited to see it. I'm, I know you've been dropping sneak peeks, and I think we, we, we I know yeah. what more pieces. So I'm definitely excited to see the rest of it, like what you have planned out. Yeah, can't wait to share. Bill, are you working on anything you want to talk about? Uh, well, right now I've been. Well, I last uh, month I'll say I I dropped a project called the Niger Funks, which was very successful. Sold out under two hours. I I, I keep on saying I, know, I went platinum. I went platinum with no features, <laughs> <laughs> which is like very rare in this space. And again, big shout out to the community because it was yeah. a lot of my friends and you know supporters that you know got a piece from the project. Um, I made a hundred and eleven you know crypto. 
crypto punks inspired derivatives but they were these derivatives were paid homage to you know nigerian to the nigerian culture diversity and also like humor and pop culture so it it sold out and you know i'm uh the, the success is amazing but i'm also trying to not just make it a one-time like thing but also like repay you know people that you know invested because i i see people that buy your art i know some people might buy the art because they like it but i still see it as an investment in you so i my plan or my future in this space i want to to make sure that every holder of a piece of my work you know will also get that investment back like tenfold Mm -hmm. that's why i keep on you know drawing i keep on you know planning and plotting and doing everything i'm doing so yeah the project was good but i plan in the future i haven't and there's no set time to you know make a wider more accessible funk maybe like a thousand or 500 i don't know i'm still in the early 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 stages of planning but i'm also just working on my normal arts you know i'm trying to right now the pieces i'm working on i'm making them different from what i've been dropping before you know i'm trying to pull all the skill set that i've acquired by you know learning drawing animation and all that i'm trying to create you know something special with my art you know i i think i found out that you know i mean a lot of people can do can draw but a lot of people can't draw the way you draw so i'm trying to you know make my art distinct and you know special in a way that if someone sees it from across the road they'll know oh this is a feel peace this is peace by feel hill so i'm just i'm just working towards you know perfecting my craft and you know trying to make all my holders and collectors you know get more from what they just bought and 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 you're talking about your illustration but you're not mentioning your treaty bro like this guy oh, oh this yeah, guy, yeah yeah this guy I, I, so I, I do i do i just keep out of the treaty <laughs> yeah. because uh yeah you do see right. the treaty but me i'm watching it i see you so. uh, yeah <laughs> Uh, so, the treaty, uh, yeah, I I did 3D. Uh, what what you know stopped? I would say what slowed it down was uh the again you know the thing about 2D and 3D illustration uh, and 3D is that in 3D you're limited because of the device, the machine you're using. So my laptop has was my old laptop was really you know buggy shitty. It wasn't 3D worthy. So right now um I've been able to get a new laptop. So I mean, I may not be, I won't, I, I'm trying to, you know, get back to the roots of 3D and also enjoy the process of creating, not, you know, because creating on a shitty laptop won't make you enjoy what you're making. You're either battling with your laptop or your machine, you know, slowing down. So right now I'm going back to the basics. I'm basically making the donuts from scratch again. But yeah, uh, I feel like, you know, by next year like the ending of next year i will be focused more on my i'll put a bit more focus on the 3d aspect of my work and try to even tie out the things i make in 2d and bring them into the 3d space because i feel like that would be amazing with the kind of ideas i have in my mind it's definitely going to be top notch so i'm really excited about that and I, i can't wait for you know what the future will hold can't wait to see your 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 current piece, which are two D style in a, in in a three D style. I, I told you, I, I can't I can't wait for it. Like right now, you know, trying. You to... better you, you better go buy a new laptop and start working on this right now. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I have a, I have a new laptop right now. I'm, I'm, I'm just yeah, I'm trying to get. Yeah, I'm just trying to get my laptop back. I'm just I'm just <laughs> you know you no know, because you know what Phil Phil is actually one of the. I hope people will not take it the wrong way, but he's literally one of the only artists that I that I have collected in the space. That is because, it, 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 you know, I'm African too, right? I grew up in Africa, but my style has nothing to do with like the African culture and whatsoever. But like the the first time that I saw his style and his pieces, I connected automatically, and he knows that. And that's why I. He's literally one of the only artists that I've ever collected because I just like, oh, okay, I fuck with whatever he's doing. So I'm like, bro, I'm a collector, too, so you better start doing those 3D really because I yeah, want to that, that, up and, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, de- definitely. So I, uh, I feel like, you know, I even 
one thing about I I think me is that I try to move outside of my comfort zone, especially in what I make, because I mean I've I've I'm doing tradition, so I'm trying to explore even religion, religious pieces, you know, because I'm I'm Catholic altar boy, so I'm trying to explore different aspects of art, because me as an artist, I feel before I thought it was not, it didn't make sense because I see people drawing because of their emotions or that, but normally I just used to draw because I'm like, that's cool. You know, and action, like I said, I come from the comic book uh, world. So, you know, you want to have that, you know, cover image kind of pose. That was me. But uh, right now, especially, you know, into being into the space and seeing different people's works, you know, it has made me tap into, you know, other places of my art. I mean, I'm trying to use my art to question other things about not just tradition, but, you know, religion, you know, life, you know, mental health. So, I, I I'm do I'm really like I'm or I never stop creating. I'll say like being in this space is not just it's not just because you know I want to like make work or sell, but I just can't stop creating because I want to you know there's something that I want to unleash or there's something I want to put down. So I know that in the uh, like give, in the coming months or in the coming years, it's going to be you know the art is going to just go higher from here. I love that both of you are expressing that you're fans of each other's work. I think that that's <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so where can people keep up with what you're up to? Uh, sure. Uh, well, mostly um, Twitter. Uh, my Twitter is at uh, Phil underscore the same handle with my Instagram. Uh, I also have uh, an arts page on Instagram. It's Phil X Arts. Uh, but most times, if you want to, you know, get to know the real me and see me ranting and, you know, because I, I feel like one thing, especially about this space, uh, I initially tried to keep it professional, but I mean, I, if I try to keep it professional, people won't know who I am. So if you want to see me ranting and, you know, being the same uh, feel that you want to know, just follow me on Twitter. I mean, I was here before with Tris. So I I know how the space. <laughs> so if you want to see my sheep post and everything, just follow me on Twitter at uh, Phil underscore Hill. I like that you're warning everyone that you are very unprofessional, <laughs> unprofessional Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I tried to keep professional, but I feel like it's, it's just me. It's going to be fake because, like, oh, what would people think? Your mic. I think I know that, but. Yeah, I do. I do keep in mind, like you know, I have to create an image for myself. But then again, I don't want to make look all fake and trying to be all suit and tie ish. Yeah. Um. So for me, it's really um, Instagram. My Instagram is Rakimja, as you can see. My Twitter is Rakimja. My website is Rakimja dot com. So it's really you just go in on any platform you put Rakimja, and you can even add me on Discord. Is Rakimja again? So like. <laughs> If you want to keep it touch with me, <laughs> it's the same thing everywhere. And so, yeah, let's see. Uh, before we go, I want to say shout out to everyone in this room saying hella random shit. I couldn't see the comments. I, like I can't honest. read the comments anymore. I don't know. Oh, why. that's. Yeah, yeah. I, I think. I'm I'm just seeing some of them now. Shout shout out to Lil Nitsi too. I, I just saw his comments. Really <laughs> awesome guy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us today. Really, really appreciate it. This has been a good conversation. The longest one that we've had yet. I don't think anyone's oh. about it though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we we also missed out on like talking about uh I think we not we I think it's a one hour space because we wanted to talk about the issues in in the space, but I mean if there's another time we could talk about that, sure. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to revisit that one. <laughs> 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 We've gone extra, extra long. But um thank you so much to both of you. Really appreciate it. This has been a really good conversation. Um again, this is an ongoing series, so we'll be doing this again in another two weeks. And please do uh, when you launch the new collection, Rakeem, send it my way so I can repost. 100%. Oh, yeah. And thank you. Thank you for, uh, for doing that. Too. It was really Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you.
Thank you for having me. I really appreciate appreciate you know using your platform to elevate you know artists. Uh, thank you, Raki, man. You're a bro. You're a G. You're a G. Bless you. And shout out <laughs> to everybody. On. I can I can see uh, Abby fighting for Raki and, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody. Uh, shout out to you guys. Uh, Yinkori, uh, All the out. <laughs> shout out to you guys. You guys are amazing. You make you make you make my stay here like fun. Yeah. No, no definitely, yeah. definitely. All right. <laughs> thanks, everyone. See you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.